Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. I'm once again here with the Anycubic Photon P1. And in this video, I'm going to just show you real quick what the dual VAT and the dual build plate feature is like running on this printer. So before I get started, if you want to see the full review that I did on this printer, I will have that linked on the screen as well as linked below. They are doing a Kickstarter for this particular printer. And last time I checked, they crossed the $1 million mark. So Congratulations on that. That also will be linked below if you are interested. All right, so they did send over the uh, dual build plate in the dual vat, and I'm gonna show you what it's like. Now, of course, I'm wearing my gloves because I've been using this, so there's resin somewhere, but here is what the dual build plate looks like. Now, as you can see, it is uh, the printing area is quite small compared to the standard size plate. So you'll be able to see how much less you'll be able to print on either side when you use the dual bill plate. Now, this is the perforated bill plate. That's also an optional accessory if you choose to get it. It's got these perforated holes in there that's going to help with uh, pressure when you're printing with more viscous materials and uh, the weight between this dual bill plate and either the perforated bill plate or the standard flat bill plate, you can definitely tell there's a weight difference. This is lighter than uh, these other two. And then this also has like an etched pattern on the surface itself. And it just connects the same way the other bill plates connect. And then down here at the bottom, these are the dual vats, or this is the dual vat. So basically, here's how it works. You unclamp it just like you would the normal vat. And then in the middle, you have a locking mechanism. It shows you that blue means unlocked and red means locked. And they have that for each of these. And when you unlock them, they make a satisfying click. When you go to lock them, it doesn't make a click. It's really more of a pressure thing, but let's just go ahead and unlock these. And then you'll be able to take out each individual vat. Now they are small. Okay. So you're going to be scaling everything down. It does have the maximum fill line, which is right there. And then also on the side, there are these uh, openings here, as well as this little part right here that just sort of juts out to just kind of let you know where you're, which order orientation, I should say, that you're supposed to put this in because it's only going to properly fit in a certain way. We try to put it in like that. It's not going to work. So let me just turn this around and now it completely fits. So basically the little tab part on the vat has to line up with where you are going to clip it all down. And then you clip that down there, you click, click this one in too. And then it's still kind of, you can still move it because these two are not latched in place. And once you latch them in place, they are not going to raise anymore. And these are all held down by this frame. So you have to put the frame. In fact, let me just take this off so that you can see the frame, right? That'll make things a little bit easier for you. And here is the frame. So nothing special about it. It's just a, just a frame that's just going to easily slide into place just like that. You'll know exactly when you have it the way that you're supposed to have it. Then we'll just dump that one in there. Dump that one in there. Cinch them both down. Clip, clip, and then you are good to go. Now, when you install this, you are going to have to re-level it. You look on the printer, you look at the UI, you can select whether you're using the single VAT or the dual VAT or the single build plate or the dual build plate. You switch over to the dual build plate and it's going to tell you like, hey, you need to level it. And on the screen, it goes through this process in which it will show you whether you need to turn the four screws that's on top of the build plate. You have to turn them either clockwise or counterclockwise. And you use one of the supplied Allen keys that they give you. And then you just follow the on screen directions and then it will be leveled. And then when you take this off and you want to go back to using one of the other build plates, you're going to have to manually level it again. 
All right, so let me tell you what the process was like for me getting this set up because, you know, I wish that it was more fluid, but I had a little bit of difficulty. So let me tell you what happened. So basically, I was able to put the bill plate on. Everything was fine. Put the VAT in. Everything seemed to be fine. I went to do the leveling and the leveling would not complete. I have no idea why. I would get it within the tolerance that the printer said was good. And then when it was reaching its second to last step, it would keep resetting back to the very first step. And I was caught in like this endless loop of the leveling just not getting completed. And then shortly after that, I realized that for some reason, the bill plate was no longer uh, being recognized by the printer. It would say not connected, not connected, even though it clearly was connected. And I would have to like kind of fiddle with this top level lever here and I would have to go really slow. And then I would look at the printer and it would say, OK, now it's connected. I was centered down all the way and it said that it wasn't connected. And I'm like, what in the world is going on here? And then the VAT itself was also not being detected. But when I took the dual bill plate off and the dual VAT off, and I'll put on either of the original bill plate or this perforated bill plate or the original VAT, it said that it was connected just fine. So I have no idea why it wasn't sensing either of these properly. So I just put it away, didn't really feel like dealing with it. I later then learned that there's a third firmware update that I had to manually apply. And after I applied that manual update, the printer was recognizing the bill plate just fine, but it still wasn't recognizing the VAT. It said that it was not connected. I don't know why, but I did try to run the leveling process again and the leveling process went off without a hitch this time. It did what it was supposed to do. It went through all of the necessary steps and then I'm like, okay, we should be good to go, right? But I didn't think I would be able to because even though I put some clear resin in the left VAT and some third party gray resin in the right VAT, I tried to run a print and I thought it would not start because the VAT wasn't being detected. And it knew that the VAT wasn't being detected, but it still went ahead and started printing anyway. So, okay, great. It started printing anyway. And let me show you what the result of that print is. The only really thing I could think of was chess pieces. Let's say you wanted to have one side be one color and then the other side be the other color. So I went with this gray resin for one and this clear, any cubic high clear resin for the other side. And I could only fit two of these chess pieces on the exact same bill plate anymore. It just would not fit. So that should give you a sense of how much room that you have to work with here. And I got a couple little resin drops right here. So I'm trying to be wary of that. But um, these chess pieces, I think, came out looking really good as far as their detail goes. The only hang up that I have is for this uh, clear resin, this high clear resin. In this one corner, I had some supports that were really, really stubborn that did not want to come off. So something like this would have to be sanded down in order to make the surface flat. And it was the exact same thing on this other clear piece here. And then for the gray piece, uh, that wasn't an issue. It's just nice and smooth um, on the bottom of the gray piece. So a little post-processing for the high clear models. But the detail of those high clear models look, uh, came out good, although I did have a failure on the gray side because they were both the same pieces and the, um, the horse, I don't know what it's called, I don't play chess, did not come out on this one it had stuck to the bottom of the uh of the release film and then i had to run the cleanup in order to clean that up uh so you know just as far as the print quality goes it's it's good just like it is with the other prints that i made with it but here's the thing and once i'm done with this i guess i'll wrap it up and it's a pretty big deal the dual vat is not heated it is not heated. It does not have those electronic connectors on the back of it like the original VAT does to interface with this module in the back in order to provide heating. And the fact that you can't heat the resin when you're using the dual VAT immediately takes away the possibility of using more industrial or highly viscous resins uh, reliably.
Now, I have not tested any super viscous resins that are not heated, but I know a lot of them greatly benefit from being able to be heated, as does any resin, especially if you are in a colder environment. I'm lucky enough right now, at least, for it to be close to 70 degrees outside in December, but other people don't have that luxury. And when you're printing in a space that's not climate controlled, when it's really cold, you want to make sure that that resin is heated just to increase the chances of you having a successful print. But this does not heat. So those chances of you uh, encountering a failure are going to go up because of that. And one of the main reasons why I thought the dual vat would be somewhat useful was specifically for those more industrial resins. But the fact that you can't heat those more industrial resins puts me now in a place where I'm not entirely sure the huge use case for this since you can't heat it. Um, I guess in very niche situations, like I saw this video that another creator did, they had like an Oni mask and they were printing different color teeth for that Oni mask. So you can just swap out one color and pop another color on. So I guess with a really like niche use case like that, it could be useful. You can have two colors for something that you can just kind of interchangeably swap in and out. You know, I guess that's kind of neat, but is it going to be worth the cost of getting this kit specifically for you to do that? I guess that just depends on what you need to use it for. But, you know, for me, if that was the only real option for me to be able to use this because it's not heated, I personally just wouldn't have a use for this. Um, and it's kind of funny because it was the whole P1 they led with this dual that dual bill plate thing. And I understand why some people didn't really understand why this was even a thing. What use would it have, especially from like a hobbyist perspective. But then when you bring in the whole industrial side of things, it made a little bit more sense for um, some of those more expensive, more viscous resins. But when you can't heat it, it's like, now what? You know, so I don't know, but I did say that I was going to make this video so that you guys would be able to check it out and I did it. So here you go. But that is the dual that dual build plate for the AnyCubic P1. And you can just access the ability to do this straight from the slicer. You can assign the different resins to each vat. It has it for the left. It has it for the right. And then you just assign the parameters to each side. And that's basically how this whole thing works. But um, that's going to do it for now. Just want to make this real quick video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.